It's uh, being it's three o'clock. We'll call the regular selections meeting to order here at um, three o'clock today. Right? And we'll start with privilege of the floor. Is there anyone who has anything they'd like to bring up at this time? Yes. Hi, I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm Bonnie Ham. I'm running for state representative. I was a selector 18 years. I was in the legislature 14 years previously. Um, I just decided I want to go back. Okay. And I just wanted you to have a name and a face. Um, over the years, I represented Lincoln, Woodstock, Eastern, Livermore, part of my tenure in the legislature. And then later on, the district changed to um, Thornton, Woodstock, and um, I don't think I ever had Waterville. Thornton, Woodstock, and um, oh, Campton? Ellsworth. 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 <laughs> so I've, I've represented those two districts. Now the district has been redistricted again. Redistricted and uh, the new district is Lincoln, Woodstock, Waterville, and Livermore. There's nobody that lives in Livermore. There's one no. piece of private property, <laughs> a pond up there. I'd like up there to see it. And, uh, but there's no people to yeah. represent. And if a decision needs to be made, the town of Lincoln uh, makes the decision on behalf of Livermore. So uh, I'm a known entity in Lincoln and Woodstock. Um, obviously, because I've been my own business there, and I, I'm chair of the planning board. I'm on the town budget committee. I'm on the school budget committee. The school's a, a separate entity, but I serve on two budget committees and on the planning board locally. I'm a Rotarian. I'm involved in most of the organizations um, going on in Lincoln Woodstock. I'm not as familiar with Waterville, but I intend to be. I win my election. I intend to represent uh, Waterloo just as ferociously as Lincoln and Woodstock and be available if you have um, some issue or need. Uh, it's a lovely drive down here. It's about 20 minutes from my house. I live in Lower Woodstock, so I can be available. And uh, it's, a, it's a fortunate type district because there's a lot of commonalities. Um, we've got two ski towns, we have seasonal homes, we have tourism. So you have some common ground, which is a very fortunate thing. Uh, sometimes you have two or three cons constituencies <coughs> to represent with different ideas. But I would, you know, I, I can't say for sure, but I would assume that um, this similarities Mm -hmm. between Lincoln Woodstock and Waterloo. So I just wanted you to have a face and a name with that person that's going to be on the uh, ballot on September 9th. Um, the primary is the election, in essence. Uh, I'm a Republican. I'm running against the incumbent, and I want to make myself perfectly clear. I, it's nothing negative about the incumbent. He's a good friend of mine. Um, there's not a great deal of difference in philosophies. It's nothing personal. I'm not running because um, in any way it's a reflection upon anyone. I just would love to go back down there. I just am ready. Um, I'm at a point in time in my life when I'm ready to go back. So um, I hope you consider me as a, a candidate. And as I said, the primary is the key election. There's nobody on, on the other side of the, the ballot. Well, there's nobody, actually nobody running as a Democrat for this district? Nobody running. But so it's over. And one is also a Republican in there, the two yeah. running. Oh, OK. Two for Republicans this. running. All right. There's two Republicans, no Democrats. So you make a choice in uh, September. So okay. thank you very much uh, well, for you're giving welcome. me this you're opportunity welcome. to introduce myself. And uh, I intend to be a selectman here someday. That's another one of my goals, <laughs> to go back and be a selectman, because I also love that. I, I love being a selectman. So I have some idea of what it's like to uh, be a town official in the run town. And I found that extremely rewarding also. So on that note, uh, let's
let you get to your business. Okay, what's, well, what's I appreciate you coming down. Uh, you uh, your business. I own Isles Antiques, uh, which is a shop uh, right on the main street of North of Stock. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I've owned that for 21 years. I love it. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah that's, that's the business. Mm -hmm. I, I was president of the chamber forever. I've been involved in other businesses over the years. Uh, but that's that's my current business right now. Thank you. Well, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. So the first item on the uh, agenda is the approval of minutes. Now, they didn't get distributed to now, and uh, what I'm going to do is um, defer this since we haven't had a chance to read them. Sure. The end of the meeting, and we'll see where we are time-wise, whether we want to take the time to read them or not, and okay. or otherwise we'll defer them. Very good. Uh, financial update. I uh, included an update in your packets. Yep. Um, again, our couple of things. The uh, the rec um, is currently at around 48 percent spent or uh, revenue. Revenue. Okay. Um, which you know, obviously, we've been making up uh, since June. Yep. Um, the uh, I I looked at the previous uh, few years, and I think I told Margaret and Mike at the last meeting that's about historically uh, where we are each year. Okay. Um, my concern is the after school programs and uh, we'll be talking to the parents next week. Rachel will be meeting with all of them um, and seeing what the interest is with the after school programs. Um, but we have big, big uh, weekends, Columbus Day weekend, we have the Halloween and we have vacation week uh, at the end of December. So. We we have um, we have some revenue to make up. I don't know if we're gonna. Oh, the how's been the boat volume? This boat volume been, no, very high. A very lot higher. High relative than, higher than usual. Relatively higher than than usual, and definitely higher than last year. Okay. Um, this sixty thousand does not include August boat numbers. Obviously, we haven't turned those in yet. Um, okay. So there's. Between August through um, the end of uh, Columbus Day weekend when we close, uh, Rachel's thinking probably along the lines of twenty to 25,000 just in bold revenues. So we're doing very well. Okay. Um, uh, no other, uh, we'll talk more about each department revenues with the MS4. Right. Um, Expenditures, um, we're tracking on all uh, departments. The only, the only department I looked at there mm -hmm. that seemed to, uh, uh, is administration, is that pretty much still on schedule? It looked like we had spent like 70% or so of them. No, we're 65.3% spent okay. and we're 67% right. through the years. Okay, so, so we're, we're right, right on. on. Yep. Schedule, okay. Do you have any other questions about the financial market? No. No? no. All right. Department head updates. Uh, yeah, Jim, you want to start? Jim. Yeah. <clears throat> um, water, the water main to the new well is in, the conduit is all in, the trail restoration is almost complete, and um, we should have a very short punch list. Uh, by tomorrow, hopefully, or at least by Friday, any broken branches along the trail should be trimmed and checked. Okay. And uh, most, most. So they are going to do that. Or, well, I don't. Well, up to the Forest Service, what the Forest Service wants to do. But those branches that are on private property, you want to be trimmed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And okay. Their, the intention is to, well, last I checked, and of course tomorrow we'll have a progress meeting. Uh, first thing in the morning, but uh, they're supposed to bring a bucket truck truck in with a tree saw and a trip chipper and just go drive right down the trail right. and hit any broken branches and clean that up, make it look really better. But I think it's uh, I think they've done uh, quite a good job, and especially the installation and everything of of uh, all the underground utilities went well. Uh, but I think their restoration is going. 
Is there any resolution? No, and I happen to agree. I mean, as I walk through, I mean, now part of it is because they made the road look nicer than half of the town roads by the time they got done. But uh, um, has there been any resolution with the electric company on the on the meter thing? Oh, we, we, uh, oh yeah, at the substation? Yeah, the substation that, meter. That, I believe, we just extended today um, as part of this contract, um, the conduit to come around in and, and get onto the electric co-ops right away. It was just a little show. Right. So I believe that CMA engineers is at a is closer to the final design. There was some. I think there was a difference of opinion between the electric co-op and CMA's electrical engineer, but I think that's been resolved. Okay, well, I, I, I was concerned because it was explained at one time we were spending something like $25,000 for a meter that was going to meter about $1,000 worth of electricity a year. And you're saying they've come up with some, you think you have some kind of a resolution yes. that yes. it's yes. reasonable, whatever we're going to yeah, pay. And, yeah, and, and actually it was, it was I, I should give the co-op credit for credit is due, it was the co-op's idea. Okay, well that's fine. Yeah. I mean, as long as we're not spending a lot of money for something that we yeah, mm -hmm. Okay, I don't, is there anything else relative to that project here? No questions? <coughs> Mark, I sent you today, and it's just an off mm -hmm. thing. There was just an article I mm -hmm. sort of read in Scientific America mm -hmm. about excessive fluoride levels in the water, mm -hmm. uh, particularly in granite of the type we have here. Yep. So I just recommend that we have the, the new well tested. Yeah, and I, I got your email, yeah. and I, I got some info. We yeah, have I, tested I don't the think well. it's a big deal. No, we, we just want to make sure that it's not. We have tested the well. Okay. Um, it was part of the permitting process right. to test it. Um, the test um, that we ran came back at 2.2 milligrams per liter. Yeah. The, the limit is four milligrams per liter, so we're fine we're with that. Fine. Yeah. And all of our wells are tested every year. Four fluoride. Four fluoride. I was surprised. Yeah. I mean, the gist of this article yep. is too much fluoride is actually right. harmful. Yep, and, yeah. uh, and we do test it, and none of our wells are even close. Okay. Um, that, that really should put to bed the question as to whether or not we should be adding. Fluoride. No, no, that, that's, that, right. yeah. that's been put to bed. People are more than happy that we have natural fluoride levels that meet roughly the minimum state standard, and that's fine. Right, and, right. and if anyone asks you, the, the consumer confidence report that we send out every year right. tells you what the test results are okay. each year. So you can refer them. Everybody gets a copy in town. So. Anything else with the uh, roads? And Not until it's done. <laughs> and so water meter installations yeah. staying on schedule? The staying on schedule. We're looking towards the hopefully completing the interior installations the end of October. Okay. Um, we have one more exterior or meter pit to install, which will be installed on Friday. Which is at where? The elementary school. There okay. have to be two feet to the elementary school. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. And any resolve to um, the person who sent us a letter saying you're not getting in my house? No, we. Um, there's still another, it'll be at your next meeting okay. when you have to make a decision on how we're going to proceed. Okay. They, they have another couple of weeks. Uh, yeah. That's it? Well, that's, that's good. I hope nothing's going on. Uh, the building? Yep, the yeah. building's going along. Uh, finally, it's back on track. Um, they should be putting up block walls, in, interior block walls, as we speak. Um, we're pretty close. We'll be putting in, uh, we have to relocate the uh, pump station for the sewer due to utilities, which may be excavation. Uh, unsafe. So uh, we relocated the pump station. They should uh, hopefully be installing that tomorrow. Okay. Um, they were working on uh, on getting in the force main and working on the force main today and half of that should be installed by the end of today. So that's uh, the roof's on. 
what the back wall is in. So interior under slab work is complete. So once the block wall is up, they should be able to pour the slab. Okay. Any questions about the building? What? Not at this stage. What was the um, electrical issue? I know we were talking about it the last time that came up. Oh, you mean the, the, uh, the generator, uh, generator line? Oh, there's, yeah, there's a generator line that meanders through the site and uh, <laughs> pops up here and there. Um, it's been repaired twice because of the, it, it was hit during excavation. But uh, uh, other than what our proposal for auxiliary power in the future for, you know, via generators, um, you know, I guess uh, we've come to a resolution as to where the condo is going to be run and, um, and hopefully be installed in this job. Yeah, but wasn't this, there wasn't any conduit? It was just... Uh, it's a direct buried, yes. Yeah. yeah the, the, present, the present line is a direct buried line. Right. Um, like a lot of other places in town. They just took cable and just laid it in the ground? Uh, yes. Not only that, they only laid two wires instead of three. So three. Ungrounded. Ungrounded. So we cannot continue to use the connection to right. the generator at the treatment plant for town hall or this building. So yeah. we, I don't have, we don't have any recommendations at this point. What we have asked is the state electrical, I don't know if it's an electrical inspector or what the title is at the state level, but we're asking for enough time to come up with a proposal. Chris and Dave are working with uh, Department of Homeland Security to see if there's grant money uh, to assist us, um, and we would put together a project for 2015. Okay, sounds all right. And the ge the two generators that we got from the Army went back? Uh, they won't be returned because they're not usable. All right. Whose brother-in-law owns that generator company? <laughs> <laughs> wow. That is just absurd. All right. Okay. We're doing, we're doing a little culvert work up on Lower Greeley in anticipation of uh, possibly redoing that road sometime in the near future. So that's Lower Greeley Road. And uh, so we um, installed uh, one new culvert across the road and lowered a culvert across, uh, I think it is Clark's residence driveway. So, I mean, that, that should be complete today. And we should be on Bean Bender tomorrow for that water service Make sure you problem go. issue. Sure. I have the email. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I have not gotten anything is back. Yeah. You have not gotten anything not back yet. from Joe? I will check. Okay. I will check uh, before I go home tonight. Yeah. So hopefully we'll, we'll do that tomorrow. How confident are we that the changes you're going to make are going to solve that problem? I notice, I mean, you know, don't really know. We don't know. I mean, is there anything you can do to, 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 if it doesn't, what would the next step well, be? Well, when we uncover it, we'll see if, if it can be lowered any. If it, if I, it can be lowered, I, I suspect lower. it's at the depth it is because it's probably down on the ledge, but I don't know that. Because right. Yeah. So, um, the only, I mean, the only option is to insulate if it is sitting on the ledge, so. But we won't know until we get it. Well, can you put add heating tape or something to it? How would you this stage? Uh, that, that I mean, even if it's even if it's just you know, so you don't have to dig it up again. Right. Well, um, if you, if if you insulate it from the bottom, would that take it away from the ledge and ha not have the ledge as a conductor of the cold? Is the that well, the, the no? That's just the question. The plan would be once we get in there and see what what exactly has been done. Yeah. Right. Um, is to hopefully improve on that, but yes, it's creating a, not only a sandwich, but more of a box yeah. of insulation around. We won't right. just do right. three so sides, do. we'll go with four but sides, I, yeah. but we got to be careful because we don't want to raise it. I mean, our, our goal is to get it as low as possible. I mean, you, know, you know, to some extent, keep track of our costs here. I realize mm -hmm. that we took over responsibility. I guess we've always had responsibility for the water and sewer. We must have signed off on this. I mean, to some extent, this is a design problem from day one, right? Yes. 
Yes. You know, it's not, uh, whether whether we have any option at some point to go back to the water bill company and say, hey, you know, you own part of this bill. <coughs> you know? Yeah. Well, it depends on what it costs. But uh, We're also going to come up with a way to uh, block the end of that two-foot culvert that that water line mm -hmm. dives under. Okay. Um, because... Uh, yeah, it's the cold air of, getting into the culvert that's, that's freezing it, right? That's yeah. correct. Okay. All right. Public safety. Not a whole lot to report as far as uh, police and fire stuff. Um, July, we were right on track last year as far as numbers. August, it dropped it off um, as far as our... In, ter in terms of what? Just calls for service. Just calls for service. Yeah. Okay. Um, it has been busy in town. We're coming off a good weekend with the Black Fly, um, not the Black Fly, the Black Bear Half Marathon and right. 5K. That was that was bigger than last year. <clears throat> they were very happy with it. Um, school started, as we all know, and um, we've committed um, due to um, some feedback we've gotten from people in town. We've committed to having a crossing guard out there every morning um, on Valley Road uh, between 7.30 and 8. Um, so we're, we're out there. Is this a volunteer or is it literally one of the town employees? Or? It's me. <laughs> it's you. <laughs> um, so but we'll see how that goes. Where, um, where is the crossing going to be? Well, the crossing is at the crosswalk on Packard's Road over to, um, by the athletic club. And then um, there's some students that are in the Forest Snow and Village area. And um, the first couple of days I've just been observing, seeing what people are doing, what their mm -hmm. habits are. Um, the plan is to get them to leave Forest Snow and Village and to come out um, the village parking lot because the sight distance is much better there than trying to cross it to come so. Um, so that's what will happen. So but I don't know whether you've seen, but I had gotten an email, I don't remember, I can't remember the name of who sent it, but David complaining Arlash. about the, uh, the lack of clear crossing striping and guards and the rest there. And the suggestion came up after this as to why we don't declare that a school safety zone, which I guess is within our power. Have you given any thought to whether we should, uh, and I'm assuming a school safety zone means we can impose a 20, 20 mile per hour speed limit when school is in session. Yeah, and then that's pretty much all you can do with that. Right. Um, it's, um, we're starting here because we have that um, pedestrian survey that's out there right now. Yeah. And to do any crosswalks to make them ADA compliant, and you'd have to do curb cuts, um, there's all kinds of um, statutorial things you have to do to create that school safety zone and to have compliant sidewalks, compliant crosswalks. So um, this is our temporary solution until they come back with the study to say, is this needed, is it not needed? Um, and I've been in touch with um, the uh, David Olarsh um, the okay. author of your email, and he's very happy with what we're doing. So for far, the time being. okay. Yep. All right. Yeah, I mean, you know, considering I don't, I can't remember because it wasn't in our budget; it was in the school's budget. But I don't know how much the school spent to harden the doors and the I mean, windows in the event that some idiot, you know, came with a gun. And and when you think about it, it's a much higher likelihood that some kid's going to get run over. <laughs> Then, then an incident like that would ever happen. So, have you? Is is get, does the school board have any concern about this at all? I have not heard. Uh, okay. The only correspondence I got was from uh, Mr. Olaf. Oh, the school's very happy that we're out there. Though, okay. Um, Gail, Mrs. Hannigan's very happy. The teachers are very happy. Most of the parents and all the parents are very happy. All right. Well, I think uh, I, I, for one, would not give up looking at, you know, I, if we could get some idea of what it would take to make it compliant, whether, you know, considering the, the study, the transportation studies recommendations along the line of trying to 
make this uh, a more pedestrian, bike friendly town than it is. So, you know, they're saying you don't have that much car traffic, why don't you do it? Uh, you know, maybe it's an idea whose time has come, but uh, if you're going to look at it, I don't you know. Okay, anything else from the police? Or? Uh, I noticed that the revenue on the ambulance is down. Yeah, we're is that all's just our way down, healthy yeah. people? Or? Yeah, all's our way down. So, um, <laughs> our collection percentage is about the same. It's just our number of bills. Just the number out. of people yeah. calling for services yeah. are down. You can't complain about that, right? Yeah. Um, they're doing um, the condo where the, where the condo fire was on Bobcat Lane and Forest Run. That condo is totally demoed now. Um, it's right down to the foundation. Um, so they should start moving. I haven't got a building permit on it yet, but um, I would think in another week or so. Oh, this is up in Forest Knoll. Forest Rim. Forest, Forest Rim. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So that's done. Um, kind of outside of, on the on the outer edges of public safety, um, BBTS has the academy has put their signs up and their their parking. Um, right. Uh, signs that were asked. So um, if you want to take a look at those, I know that wasn't enforced. I have taken a look at those, and I got another email from Ray saying why, you know, because he, Ray Kucharski is in the market. Ray's in Montana. Well, I know he is. <laughs> Somebody took a picture. <laughs> but it, he, he's in the mind that the when they granted approval, what we said is there's a, it's going to be a striped fire lane and there would be striped, you know, parking spaces. And, uh, you know, he's saying, well, the, you know, he suggested the Board of Selectmen might want to withdraw their occupancy permit until they do it. You know, like you, I went by, I noticed now that they've got signs up delineating the parking spaces. Spot one, spot two, mm -hmm. spot three, spot four, and they did the I fence. I mean, I, I have no need to see that paved. I mean, it seems to me paving it is is for the sake of being able to paint stripes. Well, but I thought that the planning board had said it was okay to not pave it. Well, and in the raised mind, mind somehow that. that wasn't the case. But you're, are you satisfied with what you are, you know, from a I public safety was. standpoint now? That you're not concerned about interference with the uh, fire lane there. No. Okay. All right. What is the new ambulance coming for? Uh, well, that's a that's a source subject, man. I was trying to give you all good news. So <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. What's the uh, thing for? We've been pushed back to um, January. Um, one one thing that we totally forgot to do was put a clause, put a time clause in our contract saying it must be delivered by such and such time. And apparently, uh, Scranton, Pennsylvania, or somebody did, and they ordered 10 ambulances and they're on a time punch. So um, we've been pushed back to January. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't affect the price. You weren't supposed to hear that. Yeah, Jim, you did not hear that. <laughs> Can I bring I don't up have to stop till Christmas. <laughs> Can I bring it, go back to Forest Rem and the fire and bring up a question? Has anything happened in Forest Rem as far as inspecting the other fireplaces that are up there to make sure we don't get a repeat every, of this? Every single one's been inspected. Okay, so they're all good? No. Okay, so they're let's actually go. working on, on getting them all compliant. And have we done this with all the other condo associations? Mm -hmm. We're getting we've done it. Forest Rim, we've done Noon Peak, All right. and we're, you know, those were, were areas where we knew there was, or we suspected there could be problems. Um, we have, and we had reason to inspect them. Yeah. We haven't come up, we haven't come across anything that gives us a reason to inspect other ones. So what they do is they do a level one inspection every year, which is just a visual thing, yep, yeah. okay. Um, so once you have a fire, like we had in Forest Rim, you can go up to a level three inspection. So we did a level three in all of Forest Rim, and that's when they found issues. Um, and then um, New Peak, same, same thing. They didn't have a fire, but we had reason to believe they needed uh, higher level inspections. They got them. Um, so everyone else still gets a level one inspection. Yeah. 
with all the other condo units. Yeah. And everything. Excuse me. It's, it's, it's a long process and we're yeah. working on it. Good. And we're getting a lot of, um, we're not getting any pushback from home, homeowners, associations, or anything, which is very good. Uh, before we get off the subject of the, the academy, can I ask the other uh, selectmen, when you get a chance to go take a look at the signage they put up, and we need to say in our, you know, we need to come up with a judgment whether we think they're in conformance or not in conformance, uh, in case Ray makes an issue out of it. I mean, we are the enforcement officers. It does not fulfill the strict letter of what was written in the site plan review, but you know, I've looked at this, my reaction is what they've done is adequate. Well, on and the site, the most current site plan, it does say packed um, material similar to the dormitory parking lot, okay. which is across the street. All right. That's what the site plan said, the latest one. Am I correct? Well, what was submitted, you mean, not, not what was approved. Right, what was submitted, yes. the last plan submitted. What was the plan new submitted. Uh, plan that they have submitted right. for the box rail and the trampoline? Right. Has it as packed gravel. But not the original not one. Not the original that one that was approved yeah. was paved with stripe. That's, that's what was. Hmm. But that, then yeah. they came back, and we would have to look at the minutes. No, I, but I remember them coming back. back, and I thought we agreed. And, but and I, the but then Ray raised it again, and I just want to make sure that we are the compliance officer. Yeah. If we don't think this is in compliance mm -hmm. with what would be reasonable, then we need to. We'll, yeah, we'll something. check the minutes. Also. Just take a look. Yeah. Okay, anything else, Chris? Martin, so. you got anything? Else? No. no. Okay. Oh, um, the, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. The um, the Pinnacle Race. I don't know if anybody's heard about that. It's a downhill mountain. Oh, this race. is the. Uh, yes, I have heard about it. Right. Um, haven't heard a lot of news about it, but the last we heard is it's still uh, full speed ahead. Um, is there anything the town needs to do other than provide an ambulance for the people <laughs> who are going to tumble down this thing? No, there there isn't. Um, so this I'm is all. Working with this the, is all the mountain. Yep. It's all up on their property. We're working with Vivian, and um, she's the only one we really have contact with. Yeah. On this. no one else is. Um, Chris Chris Sununu has initially told us about it, but Vivian is our contact, and uh, we'll see. So, what would you you know? If they don't notify you of anything, what do you do? Nothing? Well, Vivian has. She's oh, okay. They She's, have have they requested that, that so we... Yeah, have, a, have an ambulance and some personnel. Okay. The, the thing that's up in the air is the number of people that are going to be there. We've heard anything from a couple hundred to 5,000. So it's hard for us to, to plan without getting some firm numbers. And we should have some firm numbers, I would think, within... Um, a week or so. But they have not asked for crowd control or traffic or? They have for, for 5,000 people. Have, can we provide? Yes. yes. I mean, 5,000 people is a, is a busy, busy ski day. I know they're oh, okay. doing different things. But Fine. Yeah. And I so don't it's know, not have a. Have you heard anything? Just from the lodging side, I mean, last I heard, they had ticket sales of like 250. They had 30 racers. He invited 100. He had hoped for 60. Uh, expects from like 45 racers to actually pull the trigger, and they've got 30 committed. Um, so that's more than I've heard. So that's good to know. Um, lodges just got packaging info four days ago, um, okay. and so we're he's asked us to keep in contact with him every other day on what we're selling, so he can keep everyone up to date on numbers. Okay, good. All right, calendars. Um, I'm pretty much around, I think. Yep. Our nothing special. Any okay, next meeting is on the 10th. 
We're back Next to our regular is schedule. On the 10th. We're back to our regular schedule. We should be at. Some didn't call. we go through our regular schedule this summer? I thought we had a meeting every two weeks. We didn't. <laughs> uh, well, we did. Yeah, we around a little bit. There was yeah. a lot of yeah. No, we didn't yeah, go to the one meeting a month. You you like take a week off? Oh, yeah. Just, we should, oh, we election know. coverage. Oh. Yeah. For the ninth, we're all set. Well, yes. I, I think we've got to figure it out. Because you guys had talked, but you, he wasn't was there. Minute, so. Actually, we don't have it off minute. anymore. No. So it's... Okay. I'm at so the golf course in the morning. I can do the afternoon or evening. Okay. Now, this thing of having to have both a Republican and Democrat yeah. does not apply to us. Yes, right? it does. We need one of each? Yes. There are three of us, and I'm an independent. How does no, that no, no, no. The, you need the to be um, ballot clerks to hand out the ballots. Right. That needs to be one Republican. Didn't we vote those people in the you, other day? You did. You voted. Right. So we don't have to deal with that. So that's all set. Yeah. The supervisors of the checklist take care of that. But you, one of you, has to be there in addition to Oh, no, I know that. That's on a Tuesday. Yeah. Hmm. I can, I, I'm okay later in the day, I think, right. but I'm not first thing in the morning. I can't do it. I can't well, do right, first thing in the morning. Right, right, now, the hospital, so right now, what we had set up from the last right. meeting was right. 11 to 1 for you, 1 to 4 for Mike, and 4 to 7 for me. I think 11 to 1 will be all right. Okay. I think I can get back by 11 o'clock, yeah. All right. And if you can't. If you've never a problem with that, let me know. Okay, I, I can, will. I, right. I can always call Carolina. Yeah, right. later in the day is better for me, yeah. but I, I think I can back 11 to 1. All right. I'm pretty sure that what we're doing is... And that's the 9th? That's, that's, that's the 9th? That's the 9th, Tuesday the 9th. Okay. So I'm guessing... Um, just a reminder to the audience, um, the office is closed on Monday the 1st. Okay. For, and come by and vote. Come by and vote on the 9th. Voting will be at the multi-purpose room in the rec between what hours? 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. And this is just a primary? Primary. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There was a question, just in case you guys get questions. Um, if someone is an undeclared voter, they can show up on primary day, declare a party, vote in that, and then change. The undeclared. Back, right. Yeah. And then undeclared. So, right. I mean, we just got some questions. The only exception would be an absentee. Absentee. They can't do that by absentee. But they can declare their party. Right. They can't change They back. can't change back until another time. Okay. And why don't you cover the, you want to cover the MS forms? The MS form and the MS uh, Well, just one thing on the yeah. rec department. I, I did provide you with numbers. The um, camp numbers. Camp numbers. Thank you, guys. Yep. Yep. Looks like it's been on the it, yeah. Well, the, I wanted to just explain the 56 um, that we're ahead is the 10-week comparison to 2013. So we are 56 camper days ahead of the total that we had for the 10 weeks in 2013. Okay. The minus 59, if you look at the annual totals, the minus 59 at the very bottom of the page, we are 59 short of the 10 week average through week nine. Okay, so. So wait a minute, you're, you're short of the 10 week average through the ninth week. Is that what yes, you're saying? That's so the numbers, so so the numbers, so the numbers, numbers will continue to okay. increase. Okay. And that negative number will go down. She had 12 people um, participate 14 people participate on Monday. She has 12 people signed up for Friday. And she's had two seven day, seven people days, uh, Tuesday and today. So we've already made up however many of that course. And we're done now? And we're done on Friday. Okay. Yeah. This is the trip. Yep. So we're All doing right. pretty well for this one. Yeah. Right. Sorry, just wanted to get that. MS1 form. Uh, this is our total valuation form for the year. Um, we are, if you look at page, um, page three of the report, 
There are two numbers on there, line 21. Net valuation, three million, or 333,199,380. That compares to a little more than 331 million last year, so we're up about 1.3 million. And that's new construction pickups on building permits and that sort of thing. Okay. Um, the other number, the 331,745, uh, that's the number for uh, school education tax calculation purposes. And, and the, how does the valuation, uh, just you, know, you probably yep. know off the top of your head, how does our total valuation compare this year and last year? That, that's the up 1.3 million. And that's based on per building permits only building because we permits, haven't reevaluated. We have not reevaluated. Okay. There's no yeah. change in that. Right. And what is the difference? Why is number reported differently for the school? What's excluded in the school number? The, um, elect the electricity companies. Okay, so all the public utilities, all, public all of those taxes. Utilities. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So that's the difference. They pay a separate amount to the state, so they don't pay it through us. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Um, so if I could get you to, if you don't have any other questions or problems with the report, um, I this report has to be submitted electronically um, to the state, but if you could sign this cover sheet, and then as I wrote in the memo, if there's some other form when I submit it, electronically, I'll bring it around to you and let you know by email. Um, so I will uh, make a motion to approve the uh, 2014 MS-1. Is that correct? That's correct. I'll sign this. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Got it. MS-4. MS-4. Okay, as you know, um, we estimated revenues at town meeting at $1,574,250. Um, I am recommending that we adjust that number to $1,565,159. That's a difference of $9,091 less than what we estimated. And you have the line items with my recommendations for what we estimate these with a reason. Um, we can, you can adjust these numbers again at tax rate setting time. So if something changes in what I have written, um, we can make another change. So the big changes in terms of where we're off is income from public safety yep. and uh, building permits, right? Yep. And the other income is, oh, you've got that listed here, is premiums, right? Basically, this is the premium rebate. The rebate right. just is higher than what we were anticipating back in the So, Mark, the, yes. the number on at the end of page two on the MS4 doesn't match either of those numbers. Total revenues and credits. Uh, that's because it doesn't automatically calculate it and I made changes. It, it didn't, I didn't type in the number. It is 1,565,000. Okay. I, so, but that's a, that's not calculated by the spreadsheet. All right. So I, I so need to retype. That will change to 1,565,000. Okay. I'm gonna make a motion to approve. Are there any questions about any of the changes in these numbers? No. I'm going to make a motion then that to approve the uh, 2014 MS4. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. <coughs> okay. Old business, solid waste. Oh, well, you have one, uh, you have a signed permit request. Oh, signed permit. Sportoma. Oh, Sportoma. Sportoma, and yeah, and then we received one today then. So you have the one in your packet, which is yeah. Sport Toma, yeah. if you're okay with that. And then we received a second one today. A real estate open house? A real estate yeah. open house at, uh, at the Stearns Cottage, Diane Beck. 
on playing Best's property. Um, so that's the second. The Sport Thomas thing is similar to what they've done they they the every year. year. Just build yeah. what they do every year. Yeah. So, does somebody want to make a motion to approve the sign request for Sportoma as well as the Stearns Cottage? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. While we're on the subject of signs, I don't know whether did, did you bring the other selectmen up to date on the. Um, uh, the ZBA, the basically, yeah. Is, yeah, you did, yeah, okay. you did, so you're familiar, all right. And all the hinges on what is meant by an intersection. All right. Uh, I guess we need to those. sign these, yeah. Okay. So, um, we want to go on to solid waste. Mark, what do you? Um, well, we have the draft of the RFP request. Right. Um, we, you know, I, in going through this, I've made a few edits, but they're they're really not substantial at all. There were just a few corrections. Hold on, I have to sign. Um, <laughs> and um, I'm looking yeah, for good. if you guys have any further. Um, input into this or you would like us to approach it differently than the way Craig is laid out here? I thought it was thorough. I don't, um, know, I, I don't have enough expertise to even I mean, well, comment. I, you know, a couple a lot of legalese there, but, uh, yeah, you know, but I'm assuming that's what has to go into those things. It, it will need to be a very tight contract mm -hmm. in order to get but it. But what we're right asking right. in this request for proposal is mm -hmm. basically to take over the whole system in total. That's correct. Yes. Provide all services. That's correct. Right. With the exception that we would continue to own, own and maintain dumpsters. And we would pay, be responsible for the tipping fees. Yeah. We no, would we're still pay yeah, the we're tipping responsible fees. for many. Yeah. Yes, right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So our only in the end, if we went with one of these, our obligation would be to, to repair and maintain dumpsters yeah. in that year. Yeah, a couple of questions that came up as we were putting this together was um, Craig asked, asked us if we could offer within the RFP for them to store their truck in our facilities. Hmm. And we, we cannot do that. Why? Because our bonds that we use to build the buildings yep. are tax exempt. So there can be no private use of those facilities because then we would violate the IRS regulations and that's one of the reasons why we had to refinance the and pay off the hockey, the arena. hockey arena before we could enter that lease so short of and then even if we paid them off tomorrow they were still built with the bond so we would have to get clearance I don't know what the number of years are um, before we could allow private use of the so well, we that's it, it's not allowed private use but could is it permissible to lease yeah that's the exactly. space no, to them? no we cannot yeah. allow we cannot allow private even if you're lease, paying a even if they're fee the privilege that's correct but uh, if we if we went in the back door of this and part of the contract we lease the trucks from them that they're using here there um, are there we, are property. We can, we can if, it, if it comes up and right. it, it would have up. to be a, yeah we, because right. I see that quite frankly as a, a huge cost for those guys to right. have to either run the trucks in and out right. or run the trucks in and out that's going so be, right. so in terms so. of doing a request for proposal are you telling them we'll we're telling them what that we are, that we that they we are can. responsible for housing the vehicles whether it's in town or out of town they cannot use town facilities to to house them. But to Mike's point, is there is there a way that we could come up with to get around that? 
we will we will look for right. you know we will look to see if there are or otherwise but what we're asking them to do is make our bid that we know is not going to be competitive. Uh, we will we will try to find a way to to do it. We will. I mean, I okay. just wanted to point out to you yeah. that no, that's no, in there you. in case you you didn't see. It. So okay. Um, now, it, I understand that we're going after this request for a proposal. Mm -hmm. And then when that data comes back and we say, well, looks like we're going to have to stay in the business. Let's, let's just yeah. suppose that we have to stay in the business. The next stage of this is to, is to look at some ways we could improve what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. Are they also looking at ways to make our current setup a little more efficient? Yes, Craig has gone out and okay. looked at our entire setup and he can give us that feedback. Right, and right. I think the proposals will give us that. The, and the because proposals. The, the proposals will tell us how they're going to do it. Right. Right. You know, if we don't come to an agreement, we'll at least have some ideas of how we should be doing it. Yeah, I, I think it's important relative to the vendors here that we come up with some way that we can accommodate those trucks or otherwise I don't see how they can come in with a competitive bid. And and it's, what are we doing here? We're, we're, we're doing this because we're trying to find the competitive bid, not not because we've got some obligation that we're trying to fulfill. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm a little leery on even putting this out if we can't well, find a way to get around that. I mean, just the driving the truck, even if you park oh, no, the I, camp and I, driving I, it back and forth every day. Which I is understand, but still, crazy. that's that's part of our, you know, our cost is in and out, but their cost is going to be in and out because if they go in, pick up, out, they're not right. coming back. Well, they're not maybe. coming back. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's not that far out of whack, okay, but it could um, be something. All right, leave it alone. Then maybe yeah. it's not a big deal to them. All right. Okay. Good. Do we have any idea when we expect to hear back from? Us? Well, we we have asked them in here. It'll it'll be basically your second meeting in September when they when the bids are due back. Okay. <coughs> Temporary dumpster locations. This is you. So you want to put a few more dumpsters out? Uh, yes. We we want to put out three additional dumpsters. Um, they will not be in enclosures. Um, so they'll be in the open. Uh, our <coughs> options are to either bring staff in on that day or put these dumpsters out. Because if we don't put the dumpsters out, we'll probably bring the staff in on Sunday afternoon to check, and then again on Monday to empty. Um, Mike White has requested that we put these three out and we should be- And where would we put them? Uh, one's gonna go at the Golden Eagle, uh, one's gonna go at the Black Bear Lodge, and one's gonna go here at Town Square Lower Level. Do you have any issue? Um, well, I'd kind of like to see staff out to get people, we can educate m more people, the more people we see during the time we're here. Meaning that we're, we talk about the problems we have with people dumping televisions, dumping this, dumping that. Whereas if we have a staff member out, I'm not saying not put out the dumpsters, but I think you know we might want to look at adding staff during these prime times just because Hopefully the building will accomplish some of this and we can get some of the, these people on track, give them corrective notice. That's my thought. On the other hand, we're making somebody give up their holiday. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I understand that. But I, I, think, mean, I think going forward with this building, yeah. there, right. you know, hopefully we'll pay attention. But I think that we're gonna see more people up here dumping stuff for Columbus Day weekend than we are for Labor Day. Okay. Because that's the traditional time that people are going to start their ski turnover right. and, and clean out their condos yeah. and get them ready for the renters coming in, people that are, that's just, yeah. you know, maybe Jim can bear out our, our trash levels. Well, you know, Matt can yeah. also talk to the Black Bear Lodge. I mean, we, we will not be able to go the three-day weekend None of the long yeah. weekends we are. We oh no! Put the dumpsters out. Any yeah. of the three-day yeah. weekends, regardless of the yeah. timing, right. without dumping them or having additional dumpsters, he can't do it with the two dumpsters. Yes. Yeah. No. No. I. I am not saying um, either or. So I'm just. I. You know, if it's really hard because we keep we're going back and forth, and I know we're all struggling with this, but we. You know, we don't want dumpsters out in the open. 
but then we allow them because there are extenuating circumstances. Right. So, uh, you know, I don't know. It's just Con consider putting out a porta potty. It's you don't want a porta potty out, but there are certain times you need it. Yeah, I I don't know what you do. I mean, I don't have a problem with putting the extra dumps in that. I mean, I think your comment, Mike, was it was a chance to, if we had somebody here, to go around and instruct people about how they sh what they should be putting in what. You know, and particularly as it relates to the transfer station when people dump in whatever they want over there. Right. Yeah. But yeah, also our transfer station isn't going to be set up in a way that's conducive for anything. Right. It's going to be hilly nilly anyways because it's up on the top. Right. Yeah, top I mean, of the hill, for right, right now, it's not yeah. this weekend. <clears throat> right, but I, I'd say just get the extra dumpsters out for now. And let's look at Columbus Day as it comes around. Yeah, and, and Matt really um, is here to talk to you. We, at the Black Bear Lodge, we are, we are continuing to have problems. Our, our business has done very well in the past Two months, our business has been up almost 30% from last year. Um, so right now, the guys are already there. They're doing an amazing job, uh, the waste management team. They're coming to us three days a week just for us to keep up. Mm -hmm. um, we can often, uh, they can leave and I can refill it before I you know, see its tail lights. So um, moving forward, um, if we're not going to have the option, even in the wintertime, we've always had the option for that third one during vacation times. Um, if that's going to be something, an unenclosed third dumpster isn't going to be an option, um, then the black bear is going to be needing to look for another solution. Um, and I would like to ask that you guys help us work with that, whether it's some cost sharing, coming up with a solution. Um, you know, we, we see it, there's really three options. Is one is to extend the current enclosure that we have to add a third dumpster. Um, Waterville Company has agreed to accommodate us because that's their land to the side there. Mm -hmm. um, and we would work on that putting a compactor in um, or putting a dumpster out there as we need it unenclosed. Like, like you said, like, like the port potty dumpster. Yeah, but, I, you, but, but this is more of a per permanent situation for him. For, for us for, in for, our business is increasing. Yeah. We had it, um, you know, we have the same, if I, if I keep, if I do my job, I'll, I'll, I'll make it a midweek issue in the wintertime. Right. Uh, but currently it's just the vacation weeks, yeah. but in the summer, we've been yeah. in the past six weeks solid where we've had three pulls and we could have used another dumpster very easily. Yeah, I, I can see that being a necessity, and if they're, we're willing to work together and add an enclosure to it. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, are you okay with us pricing out an enclosure extension? Yeah, to put on the, the third. Well, episode? and and I think you, you know, I'd be also interested in if there are compactor solutions mm -hmm. that are not ridiculously expensive. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. if there are something that are made on a small scale, I think we ought to look at that as well. Right, but if our problem, our, our fundamental problem is the lack of is the density of the trash we're hauling around. We're hauling around air. I mean, we don't, you know, because of the way what we've got right now, particularly on the recyclables. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're we're just sending empty trucks up there. Yeah. Well, something to look at. Well, so if we're going to look at enclosures, I, I, I mean, I, I'd likewise to look at, is there any solution that would involve, you know, a, some kind of a compact? But if we get it in one, we have to offer one to all the other. We're yeah. working with Jim to try to see what the options are. Okay. okay. Be for, because of the size, yeah. the last one I was ever responsible for buying was a 40 yard, and we don't need a 40 yard no. there okay. right. um, at over $40,000. So. The other thing is, is it worth it cost-wise to get a compactor that's going to give us one and a half dumpsters worth of trash, or is it cheaper just to put in a, a, a third dumpster with a bigger enclosure? That's Jim's helping us try to figure out that now. Where would this enclosure expand to? Um, to the right, into those woods, into Waterville Company's land. Yeah, so it would just ex extend another third. Adding, adding to the cement pad and the, uh, the fencing as well. And then we'd also, there'd be dirt work because the guys, it's currently right up against the trees, so the guys would, for the truck to get to it, there'd have to be some dirt work and some trees drop. So I, I'd like to bring back to you the, at your next meeting a cost estimate. We'll look at the, we'll look at the compactor, we'll look at the cost estimate and give you a recommendation for the expansion of that enclosure. Because okay. even if we go to an outside, we still are going to need. Right, but we're, we're trying to get away from permanent outside. Huh? Mm -hmm. It would be, but 
Putting it outside is like putting a permanent porta potty in. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, no, no. Yeah. When, if we're talking about an outside vendor, vendor, oh, vendor, I'll oh, gotcha. Okay. Up, we're definitely yeah, because yeah, our, our concern would be right now the guys are great about, you know, uh, Brian is real, our maintenance manager is real good about calling and saying, hey, business is kind of slower this week. Don't worry about coming. Mm -hmm. Or we're slamming. Is there any way you guys can get an extra haul with a private company that would pretty much go away and we'd be locked in it? Three, three drops, once they show up, you're getting charged, whether there's something yeah, or no. not, or right. whatever. So that flexibility kind of goes away, but for whatever's worth to y'all, uh, the, the town team has been incredible about providing the service. And we really appreciate that. Yeah, if you expand that dumpster, though, you're going to have to expand the parking lot as well. So that, uh, yeah, so just so they can pull into it. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Correct. That's a... Uh, and that could go... Way. Yes, it is. There's a path through the woods there that we're going to have to be careful. For sure. Free rather. Yeah. Yeah. We need to open the door. Yep, and he's open to accommodating all that. We've discussed it a couple times already. Okay. Um, so you are okay with the dumpsters being in the open temporarily for these yep. two holidays? Yes. Yep. And we'll come back to you at the next meeting for the black bear. Great. Yeah, well, eventually we've got to come up with a solution of if we're going to stay with the recycling and everything else. So you know, of what does the permanent solution look like? Yeah. Um, because um, it just seems that what we're doing now is is every meeting we're talking about trash. <laughs> trash All right. Signs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man River stepping stones. Yeah, this is kind of information only. I mean, well, um, it is for information only. WVAIA said they're probably going to be able to handle the repair costs. Um, they okay. have replaced the two smallest stones out right. there um, with larger ones. And um, But there, I mean, what was more concerning to me was um, Jed's comments there about the scouring. Good. Yeah. Um, and, right. Okay. Oh, you got to um, and the, I thought it was also a little interesting to see the Forest Service comments that it's basically tough, you're going to have to live with it. And oh, by the way, if you, if you cause any problems, we may not let you keep it. I mean, it seemed to me to be the two... Yeah, I, yeah, they don't like it where it is. They're allowing us to keep it there because they want us to appear, abandon the trail. They want us to abandon the trail and and just get rid of it. get rid of the stepping stones. So because they don't like them where they are either. But they don't have. There's no other location to put them. No, I mean AIA has been working with them. Right. To try to and and I know them. I've talked to the AIA. I mean the Forest Service is not. It will not allow us to relocate the trail to get away from the river. I mean, there That's is right. easy ways to do that, but not no, no, those are reasonable options at this stage. Well, I don't, it seems to me, again, you know, given the presentation we heard the other day, I, you know, if anything, we should be encouraging more local trails, you know, that are relatively right. short distance that people who can get out and experience a little bit of the country. So, uh, you know, yeah. But we don't have to do anything, right? Um, not at this point, unless you have something you want us to investigate. But this, it is the well, solution the we is, have right now. The bridge is just out, bridge of is out of the question. Mm -hmm. the I mean, we're not ever allowed. Well, they might allow. No, my understanding is they would allow it. They allow it, but it would be on. You know, we'd have to be a hundred thousand dollar bridge. Oh, more than that. You know? Yeah, I thought it was it's probably yeah. three hundred. <laughs> By the time, because it would have to go all the way from one bank, not just from the peninsula. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it would have to span the whole river and be up and yeah. everything else. It would be ridiculous. Okay. Well, they look good right now. Well, let's hope they, they've uh, put nice flat yeah. stones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I guess Jess they, does they uh, salvage the they salvage the stones out of the uh, from the water the water line quarry out there. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Any correspondence? 
I, I just wanted to let you know that we have not heard anything back from, we have written a, another letter uh, to the Winans. Yeah. Um, on the 21st, we have not heard anything back from them in the week so far. Um, Ted Hammond has attempted to contact them by email and mail, um, has not gotten any feedback from them or go ahead from them to do the repairs. Okay. So we are basically waiting for our deadline and then, but we are not ready at this point. Did we get any update on the North Star? Uh, the North Star, he came in today to um, get closing costs, uh, water and sewer and taxes for one of the condo units. Um, so apparently they're doing a closing relatively soon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is one of the condos within One of the, the condos unit. in the Black, or in the North Star, but we have not heard anything else. And do we have a lien on that condo? Um, yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. We gave him the number to pay off everything on that plan. Yeah. yeah. But at this stage, relative to liens and everything else in the North Star, uh, there's nothing else we can do at this stage. Nothing else we can do at this stage. Okay. So because so he's not purchase. selling the he's not selling the inn, he's selling a condo unit because he still owns. Two of the three of three the of four, four, three of the four condo units. So he's selling one of these. So the the discussion we were having the last time, where we had heard that uh, Nancy Ellers was yeah. yeah that fell through that fell through that, mm -hmm. that was my question. Apparently that fell through. I mean we didn't we haven't received any call. Or anything. There's something going on, but I don't know what. It's yeah, just, it no. gets more and, and more. And the foreclosure is not happening. That's correct. But, but from our standpoint of liens, particularly on the water sewer, we were, we filed them and we're just, we're, we're, uh, waiting, we're waiting for them to mature. Yeah. mature. All right, okay. All right. <coughs> Any other correspondence? Um, no. Uh, no, I don't have anything else. Okay. Anything else on privilege of the floor? Board concerns and directives. John Kelly talked to you about the flashing sign. Yes. Who? I understand we've got a flashing sign in Town Square. Okay. In uh, um, somebody, I, I guess in it's the... Uh, the, the uh, clothing store. Next the clothing to store next to the lamp. Mm -hmm. To the, the pot belly. No, is it pot I, Mark, refresh yeah. me. Even though it is town square property, flashing signs of any type, any place are not permitted, right? Um, yeah, I didn't bring my, I believe you're correct, I didn't bring my zoning ordinance. And to our knowledge, no one applied for a sign. Uh, they are not required to apply for signs inside town, town square. square. Right. Okay, as long as it's facing in. in. But, uh, the, but the restriction on the flashing well, signs. Well, that I would have to check that, but I believe you're correct. Check. I think our interpretation, I think, I think we had was someone else that had a flashing sign and we made them take it that's down. That's correct. Right? And I, I think neon signs and flashing signs. I think neon is permitted as long as they're not flashing. Well, because there, there's a ton of neon signs. Most yeah, of them like open, the sign. you know. Yeah, well, we'll we'll check it, but yes, I believe okay. we did make someone else with a flashing sign take it down. Okay. You can see it if you like. Yeah. What about the flashing sign? The sign that welcomes you when you come into town. <laughs> town doesn't have to follow its own <laughs> rules. I'm just saying, if they weren't breaking oh. the law, I wouldn't flash. Right. Uh, and the only other thing that I had on the board concerns with directives, um, we need to come up with a date that we're going to hold the hearing for the dog license. Not for the dog, not dog yes, license. Yes, dog, the, the dog, dog uh, leash. leash. 
yeah. to get some public feedback and comments on what do they want to see in an ordinance if mm -hmm. we were to write an ordinance. Okay. Do you want to do it at the next meeting? Well, um, what I, I would, I, I, I think we ought to try to pick a date that would encourage some attendance. Okay. I mean, if we took the next selectman's meeting and did it at 4 o'clock, are we going to have any attendance? Yeah. Well, the suggestion I would make that if we're going to do this and really want to get a fair, you know, oh, it's kind of, we do it the Saturday afternoon or evening of Columbus Day and do it at an open hearing at the school gym. Mm -hmm. At the rec the yep. center, yep. so people come in and you can you know really get a sense of when is Columbus Day? Uh, it is the 11th and 12th and 13th that long weekend. So Mike's of talking October. about the 11th of October. I just got to make sure that I'm not any mark on my calendar. Right? I think I'm here. I I, um, I may be in Turkey. Hmm. It's very funny. What? Robert and I were supposed to go to Turkey October 11, really? 2001, <laughs> and they started bombing Iraq yeah. October 9th, and we decided not to go. I'm waiting so for them got to vouchers. start bombing Turkey. <coughs> I should find these vouchers for you for yeah. discounts for, for not taking this, this tour we were supposed to do. Oh, okay. Well, there yeah. you go. Um, I think that is a good suggestion to try to do it on the uh, uh, on the 11. On the, that would be on the Saturday the 11th. And I would say about five. Do it about five. About five o'clock. Yeah. Because you've got all the BBCS activities. Mark, I'll go home and make sure that. Okay. That that's a possibility. Yeah. And again, the focus on this is not whether we yeah. want the leash law. What, what, what would, would it, what, what, what do you expect us to do? And I think we need a presentation by the public safety people to say what we have, what our historically, what our issues have been, and how what they feel about it. Right, I, but I'd like to just see some yeah. public feedback comments. What do, what do they expect us to do? You know? Yeah, but I think the public safety component is the most you important to, this, to see if it's enforceable, to see mm -hmm. if it's realistic. You could have a dog control and or recycling officer. <laughs> there we <laughs> Apparently there was a dog incident in town square. I don't know exactly when it happened, but it was uh, the dogs that were involved that I heard about that were on the attack. It was the same one that the jammed in the stomach two years ago. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. Is there a dog I would know? Huh? It's, there's a lady you sometimes see her out running. She always has her dogs on leash, and they're both um, golden retrievers, and they're she's... red. They're kind of reddish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she she has them on leash, but you know, and the um, incident with Jamba, you know, the dog's very strong and got away from yeah. her and started chasing Jamba. Chasing Jamba? Yeah. Jamba? yeah. Who want to chase Jamba? <laughs> I'll um, make sure that Dave or Cats come in and talk to you about what you want in that presentation. Yeah. Okay. At the next meeting. next meeting. Yeah. All right. Good. Um. So we need to go into non-public? Anything else under board concern? Other than what? Oh, uh, do you want to uh, take a few minutes and read the minutes and approve them now, or would your preference be to hold them? I read them. I have one small I correction. Um, I okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Mark Walter is W A L T E R now. W O L L T E R. Thanks, Matt. the uh, paragraph about the North Star Inn, I think it's just a grammar correction. Mark was contacted this afternoon. It says Mark contact this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Right. Well, I didn't see anything else. I'll make the motion to approve them. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we're going to go into non-public. <laughs>